we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at X-Men Issue 1. This is from the 2019 series, so the legacy number is 645. This was written by Jonathan Hickman, art by Linnell Francis Yu. Jerry Alagulian was the inker. Sonny Gao, color artist. VCs Clayton Cowles, letterer. Tom Muller did the design, covered by Linnell Francis Yu and Sonny Gao. Assistant editor Annalisa Bisa. Jordan D. White, editor. Sabalski is still editor-in-chief. So we start off with a brief skirmish with some Orcus members that Scott and Aurora are leading the charge on. There's a lot of talking. And their visceral hatred for humanity shines through very nicely. You get the real sense of their idea that they are superior in every single way to humans. And we get a brief glimpse of somebody in black and white that is apparently a temporal anomaly of some kind. And that looks like a future storyline set up. But they were rescuing some mutant kids that were in stasis there. Meanwhile, we see that Orcus is still at the Orcus Forge up by the sun and they're shooting their dead off into space at a sort of memorial service and they have further plans afoot and we get a little hint as to what's coming. We also get to see Scott Summers and his family having a little get together and of course they're eating. Overall this was an okay story but it's all set up. There's barely any action. It's just a lot of talking and it's a bunch of zealots talking about how much better they are than people and how they are playing to dominate humanity and it seems to be two idealistic groups opposing each other there's nobody heroic in here there's nothing here that says these people are good guys the cover i thought was kind of boring what's rachel doing with her fist up in the air she's doing some sort of mutant power fist i don't know what that is wolverine looks cool cable looks kind of silly but he acts like a lousy teenager in this and it was really obnoxious he came off as kind of snotty and annoying i miss old cable i wish it stopped tinkering with the timelines and just leave some of the characters the same for consistency's sake. Vulcan talks like he's special needs. Corsair is pretty cool and he points out that things seem kind of dangerous right now but of course Scott's having none of that. The art overall is good but there's a few panels that look kind of stupid but I'm not really interested in this. Nothing really happened for my five dollars. It was just a lot of babbling on and they still have those stupid white pages that are just taking up space costing me money because they're not part of the storyline. They're just little vignettes that are added in, like a technical diagram that I don't care about. Okay, there's no adjoining door between Scott, Jean, and Wolverine's rooms. You want to insert polyamory, whatever. It's not as edgy as you think it is. All in all, I would say this is actually kind of a miss for me. I didn't think it was worth $5. Story-wise, there is plot development here. It's setting stuff up. But I'm going to have to read half a dozen other books before it starts getting anywhere. This is definitely written toward the trade paperback and I don't want to have to read Marauders and Excalibur New Mutants X-Force and Fallen Angels number one before I get to X-Men issue two I don't want to invest that much money in this this is boring and these are super villains why would I want to buy eight books to read a, a super villain story contain it to one so I'm really disappointed in this it really doesn't feel like it's going to get anywhere anytime soon. So I'm not going to recommend this just because I was bored out of my mind. If you're really into character development and you don't mind a slow burn story, this is probably going to be for you. But the X-Men come off pretty unlikable to me. Very much not heroic people. They seem to be kind of focused on their own personal little ethno state over in Krakoa where they can do whatever they want and they can exclude the humans, which I think is code for a racial group or an ethnicity. And uh, we'll see see where it goes. I've got a couple more issues ordered, uh, which I regret highly. But I really am l very quickly losing interest in this. I don't know what Hickman's got planned, but so far the mutants look very much like villains. And I'm not interested. That's just my take on it. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss future reviews. If you want to help the channel in other ways, links are in the description and on the about page. And as always, we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. 
Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at X-Men Issue 2. This is part of the 2019 series from Marvel Comics. They've ditched legacy numbering because they don't care about continuity or the fans. This is written by Jonathan Hickman, art by Linnell Francis Yu, inks by Gary Alanglian, Sonny Gao is the color artist, VCs Clayton Cowles letterer, Tom Muller design, I don't know what that job is, cover by Linnell Francis Yu and Sonny Gao. Actually, the cover is is really cool and does relate to what's happening in the issue. So good selling point on that. Assistant editor was Annalise Bissa, Jordan D. White editor. All right, so this is issue two. We've seen the ethno state of the X-Men rising, and in this time we are seeing a follow-up to the events of X-Force issue one, and it's not really related. You could probably skip that, but they've got a lot of these white pages to kind of fill you in with nonsensical space wasters with lots of blank area. My main complaint with that is that it really should be stuff that is included in the narrative. It's a visual medium. Why can't you condense all like five or six of these pages into one recap page where you have some visuals and panels in it? It just betrays lazy writing to me to not do it that way. So a new island has appeared and Scott Summers takes Prestige, which is still a stupid name, and Cable, who's young and annoying, to this new island island to see what's going on because Krakoa is moving towards it for some reason. And there they see several weird creatures and encounter a strange summoner from Otherworld, which you have to read one of the white pages to even know that or have really deep lore of some old school comics, I guess. And we learn the mission of this person and what's going on. It's actually a pretty interesting issue. I thought it was pretty well written and there were some hints of other things going on. For example, on uh, one of the first pages that isn't one of these obnoxious white pages i think it's on page one they said there are hostiles giant beasts from the other place we don't normally speak of well what's that what's he talking about so it's probably otherworld but they don't really go into too much of that but it looks like otherworld is going to play a major part in a couple of the titles and overall i thought this was a solid issue it was actually a little bit more of a going back to form where the x-men were doing something as opposed to sitting around Distorting the world for their sovereignty and immunity from whatever the crimes they commit. So I would actually recommend this issue. I thought it was pretty good. The art's good. The writing was good. The overall narrative though, I don't know where they're going with this, but I really don't care about supervillain books that much and I'm only reading them because of the channel. I would say this was probably the best of the issues so far. X-Force number one's a pretty close second, but again, I'm not really into supervillain books and these people aren't really particularly heroic. Uh, we'll see how long I can stick with it, but I'd recommend this one. I didn't think it was worth four bucks, but it wasn't bad. So if you can find it, uh, I would say pick it up. It's one of the better Marvel books out there right now as far as what came out in the last month or so. This was a pretty solid issue, so I'd be okay recommending it because it's kind of a self-contained story leading into a larger narrative. But that's just my take. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider Consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews. If you want to help the channel in other ways, links are in the description and on the about page. And as always, we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at X-Men issue 3. This is from the 2019 series. And this issue was written by Jonathan Hickman. Linnell Francis Hugh was the artist. Gary Alangulian and Linnell Francis Hugh were the inkers. Color art by Sonny Gao and Rain Burrito. VCs Clayton Cowles was the letterer. Linnell Francis Hugh and Sonny Gao did the cover. Uh, it's a little yellow washed, but otherwise it's okay. It doesn't really happen in here. Annalise Bissa was the assistant editor and George D. White editor. The cover was a little bit of a warning to me that this probably isn't going to be a very good issue because it's kind of boring and it doesn't tell you what's happening in the issue. So that scene never appears. So apparently the denizens of Krakoa have decided that they own part of the Savage Land and they're using it to make food. And some eco-terrorists show up because it's messing with their plan to control the world food population. Scott, Emma, and the Black King go down there to find out what's going 
going on and it turns out to be the golden girls i'm not even kidding these are geriatric eco terrorists so while the art is pretty good this is a really weird issue and it's kind of dumb like emma frost effectively gets called a hussy and there's just a whole lot of talking a lot of talking and not a whole lot happens it's kind of funny to see these x-men villains get beat up by geriatric people in steampunk outfits but i don't know i was kind of bored and it was a really kind of a dumb premise i don't really care about old people that are eco-terrorists that's not interesting to me that's not a particularly threatening villain because time is going to take care of them first the art's okay like i said but i don't know the storyline was kind of boring and dumb and they kept doing all these substitute words where they would say the a word or the p word and that's fine it's better than groflix i guess but it just felt very trite and forced i really didn't enjoy this issue i thought it was kind of dumb and it was definitely not worth four dollars this is getting dragged out i don't know why the x-men are seizing land in the savage land now but hey they're superior to everyone else just ask them and they will crush the resistance against them and prove their superiority because that's what villains do so i didn't care for this issue i'm really losing interest in the x titles they're getting very very dull and boring so i may drop them soon i'm definitely going to drop a couple of them but we'll see how it goes so far x force is maintaining my interest more than the others and this issue was really really testing my patience with its silly premise and the eco-terrorist golden girls so i don't know if this was supposed to be silly and cutesy or if this was supposed to be kind of serious but it was pretty dumb but that's just my opinion thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video give it a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews if you want to help the channel in other ways links from the description and on the about page and as always we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at the X-Men, issue 4. This is part of the 2019 reboot of the X-Men, written by Jonathan Hickman, art by Linnell Francis Yu. Gary Alanguilian and Linnell Francis Yu were the anchors. Sonny Gao, colorist. VCs Clayton Cowles, letterer. Linnell Francis Yu and Sonny Gao did the cover. Uh, it's, it's a boring cover. Annalise Bissa was the assistant editor. Jordan D. White, editor. So Charles Xavier, Magneto, Gorgon, Scott Summers, Apocalypse, and Magneto all go to a conference in Davos, Switzerland. And it's as exciting as it sounds. And you know that thing I'm always complaining about, about everyone sitting around talking while they're eating? Hey, here's a whole issue of it. There's two security teams that are on the top floor and in the basement that are there apparently in case something goes wrong because the mutants are very dangerous. Let's be realistic. How do they respond to these security personnel? They assume assume that they are there to kill them so scott and gorgon go up and slaughter them all well they don't kill them all they maim most of them cutting arms and legs off and leaving paraplegics and probably several dead people in the way and then they proceed to extort and blackmail everybody at the table saying that if anybody tries to attack us again because charles was assassinated a few issues back then there will be a response and one of the members of the, on the council i think it's the american American even says we didn't do that somebody else did and Magneto says oh no it was the bad humans wasn't it well you can't control every single person so there may be rogue factions out there that did something there's no middle ground here it's all black and white humans mutants that's it if a human does something against a mutant all humans apparently are responsible and Magneto makes it very clear that they are superior and Charles seems to back this up and that they run things and of course the humans are going to be on edge and want to have some kind of response. The mutants seem very arrogant that they are in command and that the world will kneel before them. And that this is their right as mutants because they are superior to humans. So the arrogance level is amazing in this book. I can see why some people would like this, but to me this sounds very authoritarian. Uh, there's even an indication that the drugs they're giving people are addictive. And there's a lot of anti cap 
anti-capitalism kind of hidden in here too. A lot of anti-Western ideals kind of sub subliminally inserted in here in the way that Magneto is talking. This is a very disturbing issue. It really shows how the X-Men are becoming totalitarian and they're using their abilities to stamp down on the humans and that any human going against them will be considered part of the whole, part of the collective of all humans. So they will punish humanity if even a, a small group of people have resentment. And they even talk about taking over educational systems, buying up the media with the money from these addictive drugs. And they're buying up media, educational institutions, and they will segregate out people that they find distasteful. So they're going to brainwash the young people into their belief system. And anybody that speaks out against them won't be allowed to go to their businesses or buy things. And that's really interesting coming from a Jewish character because this is the type of stuff that certain Germans did back in the 30s and 40s against his people. So, very interesting issue. I'm really not liking the way this book series is going and I probably won't be picking up X-Men after my orders have been fulfilled because I don't like the direction this is going. This is not entertaining. This is just authoritarian masturbation. It's fantasy work for people that want to be in charge and crush their enemies. It's actually kind of sickening. I'm repulsed by these characters that I once loved. Charles Xavier comes off as very much like a Benito Mussolini type that insists on his love and beneficence will be a boon to humanity if they just fall in line and do things his way. It's pretty disturbing and I'm tired of seeing characters that I like turn into supervillains so I will probably drop this series very shortly. I was going to give it a full six issue chance but I don't know now. This was a boring book with some very disturbing ideas and the fact that they maimed all these security guys that were just sitting there probably in case of an incident and they just assumed that their mere presence was a threat and went and took care of them. That's disturbing to me. It's not heroic at all. It's a very presumptuous and very dangerous way of looking at things. So I didn't care for it. I'm not going to recommend this book. This is a waste of $4. This is political messaging in a very disturbing casing. So while the art was good, and if you like supervillain stuff, you'll really like this. This is this is mental masturbation for authoritarians. But that's just my take. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews. If you want to help the channel in other ways, Links are in the description and on the about page. And as always, we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at X-Men issue 5. This is part of the 2019 series from Marvel Comics, written by Jonathan Hickman, art by R.B. Silva, Marte Garcia did the colors, letters by V.C.'s Clayton Cowles, cover art by Linnell Francis Yu and Sonny Gao. Cover's boring, tells me nothing about what's happening, but it's nicely done. I don't think it sells you on it though. Annalise Bissa was the assistant editor, Jordan D. White editor. So the X-Men learned that somebody that actually accidentally escaped from Orcus is making their way to a place called the Vault in Ecuador and the Vault is a place where time moves differently and these people that are from there are called the Children of the Vault. They're super evolved cyborg type creatures I guess. They're described as being mechanical or having mechanical aspects so I guess there's some sort of cyborg. I'm not familiar with these characters offhand but they get there a little too late and this person enters the Vault, someone known as Serafina. So Scott and Charles assemble a team to go in, and that involves X-23, Darwin, and Sink. Now, we learned that Sink was reborn, but Sink's peers were ahead of the, him. So he's, I guess, kind of out of step with everybody and a little overwhelmed by that. So we've got them going to Ecuador to try and sneak these guys into the vault, and we end up with a bit of a cliffhanger ending. The problem I had with this is that there is a lot of wasted space in this. There's at least four pages where you just see three characters or one character and a lot of emptiness with a little bit of typing at the top. It's like the white pages but with a slight background image. And the white pages are still here. Don't think those are going away because Marvel loves to rip you off for the value for the dollar. And that's all these do is just waste space. There's actually several pages where you've got like some computer type and a few images. And that's it. And then you've got the white pages that talk about sync and some other garbage 
page and then you've got a two page spread with the intro and the indicia and the credits about half this book was frivolously wasted space i would say more than that and of course this is self-serving for the x-men since they're formed their ethno state they don't want any challengers to their dominance over humanity and these children of the vault are apparently regarding mutants as a threat to them so they would be sort of uh, competing to see who is the higher form of humanity i suppose so of course the x villains can't stand that i thought the issue was half an issue at best and probably not even that much and it was kind of boring not a lot happens there's a little bit of action but it was all self-serving for the x-men and i'm not real clear on why these people hate each other anyway so i thought just on storytelling this was not even a complete issue this was the introduction to an issue with a whole lot of wasted space it's not worth four bucks the art's not that pretty the art's good it's just not justifying me spending four dollars on this book it's at best an introduction to a story that should be coming up so i felt very cheated with all these large panels and one page spreads and in some cases more of just wasted wasted space i don't think jonathan hickman knows where he's going with this maybe he wrote himself into a corner with this drug dealing ethno state but i am not impressed with these books at all this book was hands down one of the laziest pieces i've read in a while it's not that the core idea is bad it's the execution is designed to take up a lot of space big panels lots of pages with very little wording on them it's insulting that this passes for a modern comic this is something that should have been part of a graphic novel and these white pages eliminated and made into caption boxes i hate this book this was garbage this was trash i do not recommend it i recommend not even acquiring it unless it was given to you for free but that's just my opinion thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you want to help the channel in other ways links to my patreon streamlabs and teespring store are in the description and of course we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at X-Men Issue 6. This is from the 2019 series from Marvel Comics. Written by Jonathan Hickman. Art by Matteo Bufangi. Sonny Gao, color artist. VCs Clayton Cowles, letterer. Cover art by Linnell Francis Yu and Sonny Gao. Eh, it's okay. It's just a picture of Mystique running. Doesn't tell me anything about the issue. Assistant editor was Annalise Bissa. Jordan D. White, editor. Alright, so there's still some shenanigans going on up at the Mother mold that Orcus was running that we thought was destroyed early on in the series which was just a few issues ago but in fact they are back up and running and they have another project in the works well it turns out that Mystique has been sent on a mission previously when they originally went up there was to plant one of their little transfer plants that lets you go pretty much wherever there's a Krakoan plant which is sort of an invasive species as was mentioned several times in other books particularly in new mutants where it tried to take over the star jammers biosphere thing it was just kind of passively mentioned but that's just one of the many ways charles xavier gets his way by imposing his will on others so he has a mission for mystique she finds out some information that they thought they had destroyed something but they didn't and it turns out that it might be a problem well charles and magneto have been promising mystique that they would resurrect destiny but they're not going to because she's a precog and precogs aren't allowed on Krakoa for some reason so what it looks like they're doing is just letting those people die and then not resurrecting them so they're refusing to resurrect destiny it's never going to be enough no matter what she does it'll never be enough to bring destiny back well destiny seemed to have foretold this and warned mystique and told her to do something about it i'm not going to give away too much more i think that's probably more than i probably should have revealed but charles xavier is looking more and more like a tyrant in this little ethnic ethnically pure state of Krakoa he's fairly unredeemable at this point as a character they've made him evil so many times and this is no different now he's an ethno-nationalist that runs a drug dealing cartel from a racially pure island I don't know how you come back from that while this is one of the best written issues it's also the one probably with the most stories so far because you only have three of the stupid white pages two of them are the intro where they give the indicia and all the names of the people that worked on it in these giant vast wastes 
lists of whiteness and one page where they have all the characters that are in it so you only have three wasted pages instead of the usual like six or more so you actually get almost your money's worth as far as comic storytelling goes but it was still a fairly weak story because the x-men are super villains they're, they're all working with villains they live in an ethno state and i have trouble caring about anything they want so while they're trying to dismantle orcus they're also doing it just for their own selfish gain so while this is the best issue i'm not going to recommend it i'm hating this series more and more of every issue it's getting more and more ludicrous more cult-like and more villainous i think jonathan hinkman actually hates the x-men like on a visceral level not just as an idea of people trying to fit into society he wants to destroy them by making them like these racial purists like certain german groups from the 40s uh it's despicable i find it really sad that he's destroying these characters and turning them into these villainous racist monsters but i guess that's what marvel wants to do so i'm not going to recommend this book but if you are enjoying the x-men in their new super villain guys then this is probably the best issue so far and does have some interesting plot ideas that could be good in such a villain book like i said i'm not going to recommend it but that's just my opinion thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you want to help the channel in other ways links to my patreon teespring and streamlabs are in the description and as always we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting dangerous adventures adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at X-Men Issue 7. This is the 2019 X-Men series from Marvel Comics. Written by Jonathan Hickman. Art by Linnell Francis Yu. Sonny Gao, color artist. VCs Clayton Cowles did the letter. Annalise Bissa was the assistant editor. Jordan D. White, editor. This issue introduces us to something called Crucible. And in Crucible, the mutants get a chance to undo what Scarlet Witch did. For those of you that don't know, there was a storyline where Scarlet Witch used her powers to try and get rid of all the mutants and she got rid of over a million mutant powers the people remained but the powers went away and this led into an entire storyline and it was a whole thing well they've retconned scarlet witch so she is no longer a mutant and now they refer to her as the pretender so when she did that a lot of peripheral characters lost their mutant powers and they've figured out a way to get them back and that is to die and be resurrected by the five powerful characters that do the resurrections and in this issue we see melody guthrie also known as arrow going through the crucible and having to fight apocalypse in a sword fight to the death and once she dies she'll be reborn and with her powers back so it undoes the no more mutants storyline there's a lot of dialogue in this issue we get to see scott summers and wolverine have this really really boring conversation for like three pages and then we see exodus talking to these kids indoctrinating him with their hatred toward scarlet witch and the whole issue comes across very very cult-like and it leads to a predictable ending that was something they've kind of been alluding at with nightcrawler who is abandoning his catholic faith in favor of something else and that just kind of solidifies more of this power and control krakoa has over everyone where they are falling deeper and deeper into this cult-like mentality in their little ethno state where anybody different is unaccepted when arrow is fighting with apocalypse he asks her her name she says arrow and he says that's a mutant name and i don't see a mutant standing before me so he makes her effectively get dead named by using her human name and since mutants now hate humans she can't go by her mutant name and humans aren't welcome so she has to die to get her powers back and be socially accepted they celebrate their mutants but they seem to revile humans which is what i would expect in an ethno state like krakoa so while they're building hatred toward the scarlet witch and solidifying these children and brainwashing into their cult krakoa slips even more into the cult mentality of the ethno state and the racial purity so yeah the villains are entrenching that's all i'm seeing here this was mostly a boring issue even by that standard because there's so much babbling lots and lots of dialogue that could have just been cut out and it would have been much more effective 
effective to visually see a lot of these events rather than hear it over explained several times and if jonathan hickman isn't trying to turn the x-men into villains he's failing horribly because they look very much like jonestown maybe that's his plan i don't know but i'm not enjoying this book i am having a hard time reading these issues because they're so wordy and boring and i don't like villain books most of the time so i'm really disappointed with what direction the x-men are going still and this issue is no exception it's well written if you like reading race realist propaganda because that's kind of what this sounds like i don't know why marvel is publishing something that sounds like it came from a white supremacist site but here we are so i'm not gonna recommend this the art's pretty good but the story is definitely boring and trite and full of pseudo-intellectual babblings and i was kind of bored and i'd really hate to see what they're doing to the x-men so i'm not gonna recommend this i did not like it but that's just my take thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you want to help the channel in other ways links to my patreon streamlabs and teespring store are in the description and as always we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting dangerous adventures adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at X-Men issue 8. This is from the 2019 series. Written by Jonathan Hickman. Art by Mahmoud Asar. Sonny Gao color art. VCs Clayton Cowles letterer. Cover art by Linnell Francis Hugh and Sonny Gao. Cover's actually pretty good. And it mostly does happen in this issue. Annalise Bissa was assistant editor. And Jordan D. White editor. Alright, aside from a lot of wasted space with these stupid white pages. We actually get a little bit of a story here. Gabriel Summers is back to life. We already knew that, but that's part of the story. See, the X-Men are still on Krakoa for the most part, except for the Summers moon base, whatever. Stupid. Well, the new mutants came back from outer space finally, and they brought this egg thing with them. And Rain apparently got to keep it after their stupid exploits from that garbage comic series. Well, that egg turned out to be a king egg, which is one of the brood's eggs. And and the brood won it back because this egg is very, very important to them. So there's a brood invasion going on on Krakoa and the X-Men have to fight them off and get that egg off world and they're going to dump it on the Shi'ar. But there's another problem because the Star Jammers are captured and there's an accuser that wants that egg. Well, the accuser is in Shi'ar space and that's a big, big no-no. So Gladiator's dispatched to check that out and he's got his kid with him. So we've got the brood, we've got the Shi'ar, We've got the Kree. We've got a couple of so-called superheroes with the X-Men. This was actually probably the best issue of the series because for once the X-Men weren't acting like drug dealing supervillains, which they normally are. So they've left their X-No state to go hang out in outer space with this brood egg. And it was largely a pretty solid issue. The art's pretty decent, overall not bad, and the story was pretty solid. So for once, we don't have the regular villainy that the X-Men have become, and we actually have them doing something interesting interesting so i'm gonna recommend this issue i thought it was pretty good and it's a good departure from the garbage fire that hickman's been doing to the x-men as he slowly destroys them by turning them into what are effectively super powered white nationalists so i will recommend this issue but i don't support the way hickman's treating the x-men and turning them into these villains so i'm a little torn on this one but it was a solid book so i'll say pick it up used and buy it that way don't pay the cover price pick it up for like half cover price it would definitely be worth it then but this is easily the best issue so far that's just my take though thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways links are in the description to my patreon Streamlabs, and teespring store and as always we hope to see you on the next one We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at X-Men issue 9. This is from the 2019 series of X-Men from Marvel Comics. Written by Jonathan Hickman. Art by Linnell Francis Yu. Sonny Gao was the color artist. DC's Clayton Cowles was the letterer. Linnell Francis Yu and Sonny Gao were the cover artists. Uh, the cover's okay. It didn't really bother me. Annalise Spissa was the assistant editor. Jordan D. White editor. We get a little bit of backstory about the first time the Kree 
found the brood and the supreme intelligence making a decision about a weapons program then we find out what is happening with the star jammers and gladiator and some of the other characters then the x-men show up with a horde of brood on their tail chasing the king egg and the whole group ends up kind of getting together star jammers x-men and gladiators crew and they are attacked by brood there's still the stupid white pages filtered throughout that are just wasted space it's supposed to be stylistic i guess i think it's just mostly filler crap and flavor text to disguise the fact that there's less story than usual in here and this issue was really bad for that there's a lot of big panels where not much happens so they decompress an already decompressed story and fill a lot of the dialogue in with flavor text that really really doesn't need to be there most of the jokes in here were flat and it's attempts at humor that failed miserably and it's kind of that pretentious uh, i think i'm funny but i'm not situation and it's a lazily written story it's a really bad installment in the series it's even worse than some of the previous issues and a massive letdown after last issue they're trying hard to be cutesy and silly and it comes off as being a slap in the face i don't think jonathan hickman likes the x-men after reading the phantom x one shot and a lot of these other issues i think he hates the x-men and he has no interest in actually writing them because some of these are just lazy writing and this is a perfect example of it the x-men act a little bit out of character but they come off as generic characters at least there's less super villainy in this one from them and less of their ethno state nonsense but it's still a poorly written book it's boring the dramatic parts are not dramatic nothing interesting really happens it's sort of a paint by numbers issue that you could have guessed a lot of what's happening and they're trying to pad it and it shows so i think this is a really lazy issue so i'm not going to recommend it it's a big disappointment from last issue and it's really one of the worst issues in the series because even while i disagree with a lot of what hickman has done with the x-men some of the issues were at least well crafted this isn't that at all this is lazy this looks like he was writing in the toilet at a ball game or something and was totally distracted and just had to fill some space on the notepad so yeah i'm not gonna recommend this this was trash waste of money and it's just another nail in the coffin of the x-men ip this is garbage i'm looking forward to when i don't have to buy the x-men anymore and thankfully i only agreed to keep buying it till issue 12 and i am no longer obligated to read this boring trash where they continue to destroy a franchise that i used to love that's gonna do it for this one thanks for listening if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you'd like to help the channel in other ways links are in the description to my patreon Streamlabs, and teespring store and as always we hope to see you on the next one we are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting dangerous adventures adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at X-Men issue 10. This is from the 2019 series from Marvel Comics, written by Jonathan Hickman, art by Linnell Francis Yu, Sonny Gao is the color artist, VCs Clayton Cowles Litterer, cover art by Linnell Francis Yu and Sonny Gao, assistant editor was Annalise Bissa, Jordan D. White editor. Cover's okay, kind of boring, as half these people don't even show up in the book. We really only see three mutants. We've got Vulcan, Petra, and Sway. Vulcan wakes up and the girls want to sit around and drink and that's what they do through most of the issue meanwhile he wanders off and about a mile away from the summer's house on the moon where they're at is the blue area that is currently occupied by the kotati and of course vulcan encounters them he's been having flashbacks about his encounter with the supreme intelligence and some aliens that did something to him you'll have to look it up in the x-men books but he is in fact a, a little bit of a confused individual shall we say he has a bit of a disagreement with the residents there and then they go back to drink that's the issue boring it's a self-contained story it's not the worst thing that i've read but it is boring it's forgettable it has nothing to do with anything it interrupted the storyline from last issue as far as i can tell and it doesn't really go anywhere it's filler space this is fluffy filler space so i'm not gonna recommend this this was really really stupid the little flash 
flashback sequences could have been interesting in their own story, but the fact that it's a, obviously a forced tie-in to the event of Empire was not subtle at all, and the whole issue revolved around the girls drinking. And that is one of the go-tos of modern lazy Marvel, where if they can't eat something, they're gonna get drunk. So that's what happens here. And we do learn that Liddell Francis Yu has trouble drawing people holding martini glasses, because it looks really weird. There's about three pages where they talk about drinking, and I, I didn't care at all. None of this had anything to do with anything. It was boring, it was lazy. It could have been something more interesting, but they decided to make it into something less than exciting, and this series just makes me sadder and sadder every time I read an issue. The X-Men used to be really cool and did stuff. Instead, now we've got an entire issue devoted to Vulcans, Naval Gazing, and Petra and Sway's alcoholism. I, I don't know what Hickman thinks he's doing, but it's pretentious, it's lazy, it's boring, and he clearly doesn't like the X-Men. So I'm looking forward to when I can quit reading the X-Men. I promised my comic shop guy I'd read it through issue 12, and we're getting close because the, so far there's been one issue that I thought was good that had the feel of old X-Men. Instead, these are super villains, and they were fight, sort of fighting other super villains in this one while also drinking martinis. It was dumb. This was a giant waste of my money. I wish I hadn't purchased it. I wish I hadn't read it. I could have read a good comic. Instead, I read Modern Marvel. So, I'm not going to recommend this. It was dumb. It was pointless. It was a forced tie-in. And it felt like a forced tie-in. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to help the channel in other ways, links to my Patreon, Streamlabs, and Teespring store are in the description. And as always, we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at X-Men issue 11. This is written by Jonathan Hickman, art by Linnell Francis Hugh, color by Sonny Gao, DC's Clayton Cowles did the lettering, cover art by Linnell Francis Hugh and Sonny Gao, assistant editor was Annalise Bissa, editor Jordan D. White. Cover's pretty good, it sort of relates to what's going on. The first several pages deal with Summoner playing a game and some of the local mutants going to kind of see what he's up to, and then that storyline is completely forgotten. Gotten. And we jump over to some kids at a campfire with Exodus, and he's telling them a story about what happened the day before. And that involves the Kotati coming down, because this is an Empire tie-in, and attacking Krakoa. And Magneto basically beats the crap out of almost their entire army, while some of the others run interference. And then he does some shenanigans. It's kind of silly how it plays out. Uh, they also hijack some satellites, weather satellites and military satellites. They do do pay for the ones they break but not the military ones it's an okay story it's definitely a super villain focused story because it's largely about magneto with exodus narrating and the creepy summoner guy at the beginning which i don't know what that was all about and quite honestly i don't really care the interesting part here is when we see exodus talking to the kids they say in this cult-like chant we do not fear death we fear man and those like him to which exodus responds just look at the world they have made and one of the kids says, Exodus, why don't we stop them? And he says, you can't stop someone from being what they are. They really hate humans. So the mutants have this, like I've said, sort of a cult-like mentality and a, a complete disdain for humans. And that leads them to hijack satellites. They don't care about the planet at large and what the Kotati are doing to them. It's only about their island nation. And they are building up strategies and defenses. They're building a combat school that's mentioned in here. And they want to train everybody in combat so there's obviously some preparation toward a mutant human war with homo sapiens so-called superior planning some sort of annihilation most likely of the human race i expect that i'll come along at some point and based on how much this series seems to really love the ethno staters the mutants are probably gonna win so that's disappointing overall though for a super villain story it wasn't too bad would i recommend it not really the mutants played almost no part 
part in Empire at all, from what the main miniseries said. I don't know what they were leading up to here, or what relevance this has, because none of the X-Men were in the Empire book. It was an Avengers and Fantastic Four issue. I don't think there were any mutants in it. So it, they tried to make it look like Magneto was this glorious hero, but he played no part in stopping the Kotati other than on Krakoa. And maybe up by the moon in the, the spin-off miniseries, like the little sidetrack thing they did with the X-Men. But I didn't read that and I don't care because the X-Men are super villains and I don't really care for super villain books most of the time. So if you're really enjoying Jonathan Hickman's run on X-Men, you'll probably like this issue. It's definitely one of the better written ones, but I don't care about villain books. And the cult-like mentality of telling children to fear and hate their fellow humans, even though they are supposedly different, seems kind of racist. And uh, it reminds me very much of some Germans from the 30s and 40s. But apparently that's just me. If you liked what the X-Men have been for the last 10 issues, you'll probably like this. I didn't really care for it, so I'm not going to recommend it unless you're a diehard fan. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews. If you'd like to help the channel in other ways, links are in the description. And as always, we hope to see you on the next one. We are about to embark upon a series of strange and exciting, dangerous adventures. Adventures that will lead us to all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we are looking at X-Men issue 12. This is from the 2019 series. Written by Jonathan Hickman. Art by Linnell Francis Yu. Sonny Gao was the color artist. VCs Clayton Cowell letters. Linnell Francis Yu and Sonny Gao cover artist. Uh, the cover actually kind of relates, but it's stupid. Assistant editor was Annalise Bissa. Jordan D. White editor. So we finally see the results of this game that Summoner was playing with Rockslide. And it was boring and stupid. Apocalypse in a row and we get this long ballad of Arako, which apparently was an island that was part of Krakoa at one point, but got separated and sent to another dimension or something. And we get this big long ballad of sorts about what happened to the people that went to this other land. It reads like really tiresome fan fiction, like the Silmarillion. It's long, it's drawn out, lots of talking, a little bit of action, but mostly just people explaining what happened. There's not a lot of show. There's there's a lot of tell. That probably could have been an interesting miniseries in itself. Instead, what we've got is a one-issue recap with lots of large panels and a lot of blabbering. It reads like a religious text. It reads very much like the Silmarillion from Tolkien, which means it's kind of boring and dry and reads like the Bible. I was kind of bored because it was a big fantasy epic that really didn't seem to tie into anything, but it looks like Apocalypse has built some massive gateway to that world, and apparently that's what he's been up to maybe he's had a hand in forging Krakoa in that direction to build loyalty among the mutants. It kind of looks like they moved course like they didn't really know where they were going with this ethnostate thing and maybe they shifted over to this so that it had some kind of direction or point to it. It was an okay issue. It was just boring. It would have made a better miniseries like a four part miniseries the history of this place instead of just trying to wedge it all in one book and make it dry religious preaching. So if you want some lore I would say it's a good book for that but it really doesn't seem to fit with the x-men it fits more of a conan type fantasy story i don't really know what they're doing here but it doesn't seem to really work very well but if you're enjoying hickman's run you'll like this it's better written than a lot of them i really don't care about any of this it looks like a bunch of nonsense that drivel that was thrown together from some old script that he was writing a fantasy novel for and just tried to adapt it to super villains i don't really understand what they're going with it's an ongoing soap opera but not in a fun way. It's just sort of tediousness repeated over and over again. So I already bought the X of Swords book one and I think that's going to be it for me because I'm tired of wasting money on this. I don't think it's worth the money or the time. So I think I'm probably going to dip out of the X-Men. They're just super villains and supremacists now. I have no interest in that. And I don't know what this fantasy nonsense is but it's kind of out of the blue and I don't really care about it. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future reviews if you'd like to help the channel in other ways links to my patreon streamlabs and teespring store are in the description and if you we hope to see you on the next one